I'm so excited right now to have everyone on. And then Ayaka is also here. Ayaka, you want to say hi? Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome. So excited to see you all. And I know some of you are on camera. Thanks for being on camera. I'd love to see your beautiful faces. So I'll go ahead and get us started here. And maybe some people will jump on. Maybe some people won't. But we're basically going to spend the next hour uh, sort of like live reviewing just a few essays. We actually got a lot of essays. Ayaka and I were so excited. This is the first public workshop that we've done together. I met Steve through a public essay workshop about a year ago. So uh, about a year ago, I was in the Facebook group. I jumped in on one of these sessions tonight and it ended up developing a relationship with LSAT Unplugged and Steve. And I met Ayaka through Steve's courses and it, to be cheesy, it really changed the course of my LSAT journey and my law school admissions life. And so Ayaka and I asked Steve if we could pay it forward and do the same thing. So that's what we're doing tonight. What this will look like is Ayaka and I will just, hopefully spend just like a minute or less kind of talking about ourselves, talking about why we like the process. We'll answer any questions that anybody has, and then we'll spend the greater part of the, of the hour. We actually only got a chance to select three essays. If your essay, if you sent it in and we don't get to yours today, don't fret. Uh, we found that it can be incredibly beneficial to still look at somebody else's essay and to still be in on the conversation. So this is a really collaborative hour. Feel free to uh, raise your hand or unmute yourself or type in the chat. And we have people checking all of that. So um, share your opinion, share your feedback as well. Also, if we didn't get your, to your essay today, we have a plan. We are pulling the emails. So we will still be in touch with you. So not all is lost. It's not a uh, it wasn't uh, uh, if your essay is in or not. We have your email. We are trying to get your emails and we will still be in touch with you because we really want to pay it forward. So with that being said, Ayaka, did you want to add anything in before we get started? Yeah, I think you touched on everything. You know, um, I also started off in a public session and I've attended, you know, a lot of these, these uh, public writing workshops with Steve um, when he hosted them uh, last year. Um, and that's kind of where I DM'd Alyssa and I was like, hey, do you want to trade essay? So, you know, it's really not just a place for us to kind of give feedback on essays that we received, but also these people in this in this Zoom room right now are people who are in the same journey. So feel free to DM each other and reach out to each other and make connections because you know, you never know, you might find your Alyssa to buy Ayaka. So, so you know, make sure you make those connections. Um, feel free to reach out to us. We'll, we'll also drop an email later during the session so you guys can reach out if, if you're like, I have this burning question or, you know, always feel free to raise your hand, come off mute and, and ask those questions because that's what we're here for. So, alrighty. That's true. So, any, while we kind of get that started and Ayaka, I think that you have the link for, we combine the three different essays. What's really fun about uh, I guess like meeting each other and working on this is that Ayaka and I realized that by sharing, we could get a lot more work done. So really we invite everyone to kind of share and chat. And I think I'm gonna wait for the, as we kind of wait for the link of the essays of what we're gonna look at tonight to drop into the chat, I'll go ahead and open up the floor. Does anybody have any questions about a personal statement, diversity statement, um, any sorts of admissions or applications, um, materials, please type in the chat or unmute yourself and just jump in. Let's see, so we had someone unmute themselves. Um, did you have a question at all or are you just kind of jumping on the Zoom? All right. Also, completely feel free. I wanted to say this, if your essay is up and we are kind of group thinking and collaborating, you are welcome to, yes, take ownership and say, this is my essay and pull questions, but you're also welcome to 
participate in the conversation without disclosing yourself. That's totally up to you. Uh, full transparency on my end. The first time I was in a public workshop was a year ago. My essay came on the screen. I was so embarrassed. I was just sharing feedback as though it was someone else's essay and trying to like mine for information. So um, really it's completely up to you the way that you wanna handle this. If your essay comes on or not, you can own it. If you wanna dig in deep, you don't have to own it. If you don't wanna dig in deep either. I'm still waiting on the, the link to, to be shown for everyone. Let's see. So we have a question here in the chat. It says, I'm a non-traditional student who's leaving a different grad school midway through. I assume that you're leaving uh, grad school like mid through, midway through that grad school program. Like maybe you're not finishing out that program. Is that something to put in an addendum essay or to put in the personal statement? This is a fantastic question. And I'll ask a follow up question and feel free to type in the chat, the person who wrote this. So you're seeing, you're saying that you're leaving a grad school program midway through the program. Maybe you're not finishing that program and you're, and you want to start law school. Is that correct? Okay. That's correct. That's a fantastic question. I would say you could write about that in either one of these. And, and that's where the personal statement really can shine. So Steve actually posted uh, on Elsa Unplugged, there was something posted in the Instagram story today that I thought shine, sh shed a lot of light on this kind of question. Um, you have an opportunity in your application to paint a portrait of yourself to admissions. And you can do that through a series of essays. The great thing about the personal statement, and I think that Ayaka really taught me, is that the personal statement is your biggest landing space to talk about who you are, your core values, what you will bring to the classroom and to their program, uh, for example, and, and how you'll maybe use your, your core values, your personal experiences to bring to the career of choice. Uh, I have another question in the chat that I'll get to in just a moment. So if I'm going to say to the person who asked the question before about leaving a grad school program midway through, if that experience is revolving, revolves around something that shines light on your positive traits, and you think that that experience revolves around something that sticks to your personal values, then that's a great personal statement to write about. If it's something that you're just looking to explain because on your resume, you have an idea that it might bring up some questions, then that might be a great addendum. Hopefully that answers that question. And if not, please write in the chat. We have another question here. Uh, how do you sell yourself without looking like a narcissist? That's a great question. Um, the University of Michigan Dean, uh, her name is Dean Z. She goes by Dean Z. That's not her full name, but she brings up a great idea on her YouTube channel. Well, she says uh, a great writer and a good lawyer is also very thoughtful. So I would say that you're, you're talking about yourself and you're talking about your experiences in a thoughtful way. And if you have already dug deep into logical reasoning, you know that quality, qualitative statements are, tend to be good statements, um, so within reason. So I used to be a professional tap dancer. I would not say in my personal statement, I was the best tap dancer or the only tap dancer, but I would say I was talented enough that I had a full-time contract. So that is a truthful statement, but I would say that that's probably not narcissistic because I'm also thoughtful. And then I might shine light on what that meant for me and what that looked like for me. So the more you can describe a situation and be thoughtful about it with qualitative statements and just be truthful, hopefully that'll take away the narcissistic feeling. And if you're really worried about being um, sounding like that, <clears throat> come to workshops like this or share it with a friend like Ayaka. We have another question in the chat. Maybe we'll just get to, um, we have a few Oh, we have a link kind of up. We have a few more questions. This is actually awesome. Ayaka, did you want to jump in on the question? I see a question here from Alex about PhD. Yeah, I think, you know, why don't we get started with the personal statements that we've collected? And I, I'm hoping we can 
kind of address some of these questions as we talk through some of these. So I know um, we, we won't be doing any addendum uh, reviews today, but we can definitely talk about it and also, you know, send us a DM if you're like, I have this burning question. So let me just share my screen here. Um, not that the important is, the, the, the question is not important, but awesome. we only do have an hour. So let me just... Nisha has a great question. So what's gonna happen now is we're gonna put three essays up on the screen. Ayaka and I will take turns reading them out loud, not because we love the sound of our own voice, but we found that when you hear an essay being read aloud by a stranger or someone that doesn't know what you've written, that in itself can be incredibly valuable. So we're gonna just take one for the team and do that. Again, so many questions popping up in the chat, which is awesome. Um, as we kind of come in here and talk though, I highly encourage you to unmute yourself because we can hear and, and, and talk with each other too. So thanks Anna's dropping in the chat and I'll let Ayaka take it away, read this one out loud and then we can all sort of collaborate on thoughts on this. Sure, um, and just so you guys know, I have another screen here to the side. So that's why I'm looking to the side. It's not that I don't wanna see all of your lovely faces. So uh, excuse my side glance. Um, alrighty, so it's a personal statement. I felt my life go into a sudden pause. I felt as if I was paralyzed and that if I would make one sudden movement, it would all be real. I fell to the ground with tear droplets trickling down my face. To my complete horror, it was all very real. One of my biggest supporters, my confidant, and nevertheless, one of my greatest blessings in my life was gone. My beloved uncle, Seymour, passed away. When a loved one passes away so suddenly and unexpectedly, we are never prepared for the changes to come about in our lives. The tragedy never goes away. You learn how to cope with it and keep moving on. In the short span of just a few months, I lost many important people in my life. However, losing them has only made me stronger than ever to chase my dreams. It made me take into perspective that life is too short and to listen to the inner voice in my head telling me, Dana, you only get one short, shot at life. Do what you truly want to do. You must appreciate your loved ones and the opportunities surrounding you at all times. Ever since I was a young girl, I spoke on how I wanted to become a lawyer. Throughout my various volunteering experiences and work within my community, I knew I wanted to pursue a career where I could help others. When searching for a career that shared the same values that I base my life on, there was no field more fascinating to me that could provide advocacy to others than the legal field. My determination to become a lawyer is deeply rooted in my personal life, as well as my education. I come from a big, loving family. Family and education will always be the most important thing I have in my life. In the 1980s, my parents migrated from Jordan with their families in order to help provide a better life for not only themselves, but for my siblings and I as well. The opportunities that my parents and their siblings had grown up pales in comparison to those that I obtained today. I do not come from a long line of college graduates and I am the first in my immediate family to pursue a Juris Doctor degree. The experience of growing up surrounded by people whose lives are forced to go down one road alone fills me with desire to take advantage of the opportunities available to myself. Being a first generation college student has proven to be an enchanting experience in providing exposure to various situations. I've always had a passion for learning and pushing through barriers in order to be successful. My time in undergraduate school was challenging, but I believe my ability to balance the obstacles of life and heavy course load helped me learn how to create proper habits for the vigorous workload law school will bring. Growing up with the immigrant parents was not always the easiest. Although my parents want the best for me, it took a while for them to distinguish what truly is best for me compared in the eyes of other people in our ethnic community. In my culture, Arab women in the workforce has been an ongoing struggle. The prevalence of traditional concepts of sexist roles has impacted the way our society progressed. We are expected to play roles in the household despite having skills, goals, and aspirations to become something of ourselves. The universal truth of humanity across the world is not the only way we as humans should behave today. As a new generation, I see equality as a moral demand to bridge the gender gap, to deviate from cultural norms, to personify an ethical nature, to build a foundation that will pave a path for future generations, and to inspire others in similar situations as mine is something I wish to achieve in my journey of becoming a lawyer. 
I need to be one to lead and make change. My feelings of hope blossom into a vision for my future. As the honorable late Ruth Bader Ginsburg once said, fight for those things you care about, but do it in a way that will lead others to join you. There are many more steps left for me to become a lawyer. However, the next important decision is to enroll in the JD program. As I progress further down my track to decide where I want to receive my education, there is only one school that matches my goal, mindset and dreams. That is the University of XXX. XXX's mission and core values resonate with my own values. I possess the drive, skills, analytical ability, and compassion to succeed in law school. My experiences have provided me with unique lenses, which I'm confident I will carry throughout the University of X and the legal profession as a whole. I hope to proudly don a school color sweatshirt and take on my next role as XX Law School student. Great. Awesome. So, I got that. You, you, you just read that out loud. And so I'm sure that you have some thoughts on that. Does anybody have any first, like first kind of glancing thoughts? Feel free to unmute yourself, raise your hand in the chat. I thought it was a, a powerful essay. I think it's a, I think it's a great place to start. This is an awesome jumping off point. And um, to the author, like kudos to you, because I think this is a great, a great place to kind of go from. All right, I'm not seeing any hands raised or any money on the chat. So I think I saw a question earlier um, says that their school asks for a two page personal statement. They asked if that was the minimum or the maximum. Uh, I would say if it says two pages, you really want it to be two pages. Don't, don't max it out at that. If you see another school, it says three pages, then yes, I would choose the best avenue for either one of those schools. So if one school asks for three pages, personally, I would see how I could make my essay stronger by taking up that extra space. And a school that asks for two pages, you want two pages. This one, in my opinion, is a little bit long, although I'm not sure what school you're applying to. Uh, it looks like it's about two and a half pages. So my first uh, plan of action to kind of give feedback on this is to see where we can sort of remove some statements that aren't as powerful and kind of dig in deeper to some ideas that could be more powerful. Um, we got a comment in, in the chat um, asking about universal generalized statements, which love that you picked up on it. Um, and I think that's one thing that's kind of um, making this essay fall short from greatness is we get a lot of these sweeping, very general statements. Um, right here in the very beginning of the second paragraph when a loved one passes away, you know, right? Like it's not personal. And there's a reason why these statements are called personal statements. We wanna know about you, how you react to a tragedy that's happened, how your mind ticks, what, what actions did you take? Not a in general, what, what we feel, what in general happens. We all know, you know, the stages of grief and all of that. So we really wanna get down and dirty personal here. Um, and really you can see that kind of personal and then general kind of comes through this essay in, in the, in the um, first person. And then there's like the second person that comes in of like uh, the I statements and then the we statements, the we, the us statements that come in. So we really wanna pull back on those and really be sticking with an I statement in, in a personal statement. But I do agree with what Alyssa said, you know, great jumping off point. Uh, you started with a story that's really impactful um, and kind of told us your, your ambition and your goals. So I love that that's there. Um, I, I do, agree that the essay gets a little bit long. Um, and I, I think there's a lot of places where we can kind of cut. So um, great I, starting off point. Yeah, I would say, for example, I, I think that Ayaka brings out a good point that this essay starts with something personal, which I'm so sorry um, about your family member passing away. And, and it's definitely seemed like it had a big impact on you. A piece that I sort of think about with this essay that I would like to see is you start out with, the author starts out with this really heavy moment with the uncle passing away. And I don't really see that coming up as a as a plumb line for the essay for the rest of the essay. So 
it kind of serves as this hook, um, but then that hook is not developed. And I think that the author might be trying to create a longer development plumb line saying that this person is very empathetic and this person's a very sensitive person to uh, community and other people. It seems like this person might be sort of like a humanitarian type of personality. And I feel that that's what all of the really small examples add up to in what they're trying to tell me. Um, and I get that from the death of their uncle. I get that from their parents being immigrants and maybe not fulfilling their needs as a child as much as they may have um, needed or wanted them to. And I get that from their community service that they talk about in the, in the second paragraph of the first page and they talk about their core values so i'm getting the sense that this person wants us to know that they're an empathetic person they might go into human rights maybe environmental law um, immigration law um, any of those sorts of fields of work but it could be made a lot stronger if instead of sort of listing out all of these different things have confidence in maybe one or two of these things and like ayaka mentioned pull us in and tell us more about what you did. Um, for example, I do see a lot of essays that um, talk about, I, 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 I hope this uh, like immigrant parents. And I think that those are extremely powerful stories. And they're stories that only you can tell because you're the only one that had that very specific um, uh, experience. I think the the downfall about it though, is it can get a lot into what your parents did. And if you talk about what your parents did, then I would suggest speaking about how that shaped you and how that shaped your actions. So Ayaka brings up a great point. What did you do? How did that make you think or how did that change the way that you're going to behave in a classroom setting or it as a lawyer? So I would say try not to fall into that of speaking too much about what your parents did and not speaking about um, how that affected you in your actions. Love that. Um, we have another question in the chat. Um, is it, do you have to discuss the school itself and why you want to attend within the personal statement? Love that question. Um, unless the school specifically asks for it in the prompt, there is absolutely no need to write why a specific school, why a specific program. You don't even need to write why law. You don't even need to write wh why law school. It's a very, very open-ended essay. Um, and really, I like to say uh, for a personal statement, you're really talking about your why. You know, what is your purpose in life? What is your why for being here? And, and kind of how that journey has led you to pursuing a law career, but you don't really have to address the, the, the why law why being a lawyer is important to you. So um, it, not to say that that's a great direction for an essay. Um, I think for a personal statement, 90% of personal statements out there are gonna fall into that why law school or why law career. Um, so I, you, know, you don't have to address it, um, but I think it's very common too. Um, and, and last question here then, um, and also I think Ayako would agree with me that this uh, essay actually could be divided up into many different essays. Maybe, um, parent, maybe parents being immigrants could be a diversity statement or another essay, maybe them working in community service and talking about their core values and maybe even pulling an example that they learned from volunteering, that could be an entire essay on its own. So this is a fantastic essay in the fact that this is sort of, I look at this as very abundant. They could do a lot of different directions with this um, and, and find ways to make it more powerful. And last question before I think we'll just move on to the next essay here is how do we show a connection between ourselves and becoming a criminal attorney? Or I would even say to make it more broad, how do I show a connection between myself and becoming an XYZ attorney or becoming, for example, you know, everyone knows that you could become an entrepreneur with your law degree. There's actually like so many different things you could do. And I would say back to you, that's, that's actually the work. That's what makes a good writer a good writer. And the best piece of advice I ever got is start by getting really clear about who you are. Talk about yourself. Think about your personal experiences in life. And I would be willing to bet that if you get really good at telling your story that paints a picture of who you are and speaks to your personality as a whole, then the dots actually make sense. For example, becoming a criminal attorney, you have to be a really good team 
team player. You, you probably are going to work on teams. Most likely you have to have, even if you're working as the top lawyer on the case, you have to have assistance. You have to have other attorneys that you're speaking with, communicating with. You could write an entire essay about being a team player as a, a softball player. And that would be connecting the dots enough. Um, so you don't have to prove that you're already an attorney, but you have to show us your true self and that you have some sort of skill set that would be valuable to becoming a, an attorney. So hopefully that kind of helps that. And of course, there's a lot of different answers to that question, but that's just one, one way. Awesome. Let's move to the next one. All righty. Awesome. And let's see, should I, I wonder, Ayaka, are you good to be on, uh, on for me to do the scrolling as I read this? Yep. I awesome. scroll. <laughs> Love it. Okay. So I see a question from Derek and we'll get to that in just a moment. So uh, second essay, here we go. Water. As the city burned, I was struck by the revelation that no fire could cleanse the evil that encompassed this tragedy. Surrounded by the memory of George Floyd's death, I felt a heavy sense of purpose. With clenched fists and gritted teeth, I walked along the streets leading to cup foods, the site of George Floyd's murder and memorial. Images of battered protesters and the roars of impassioned Black Lives Matter leaders flooded my mind. I felt the rumble of change all around me in the poems delicately placed throughout the intersection, in the flowers laid in his memory, and in the murals de decorating the corners. Too often we tell ourselves that nothing can be done to affect positive change. In the city at the center of the news that shook the world, I could no longer stand for that. Cup Foods was then and will forever be a shrine to the brown and black bodies taken by our justice system. As I drove away from the memorial, I passed boarded up windows in the city with handwritten notes to George Floyd. When I reached my home in the suburbs, it bothered me that they were visually untouched by the people's revolt against injustice. This is the duality facing America. Where the civil rights of many are under threat, others feel unaffected by the injustices. We use laws to dictate how to make life better for us. Americans are fighting to make the country a great place, but where we diverge is in the manifestation of that greatness. The legal system is at the center of improvement at large. Realizing this helped me decide I wanted to become a civil rights attorney. The path I was heading towards the summer George Floyd was murdered was drastically different from where I stood six years prior as I prepared for college. Growing up in Minnesota, I believed that race was not a determining factor for opportunities and that America was colorblind. Ultimately, I decided to attend Howard University following the encouragement from my older brother who regretted not going himself. At Howard, I became rooted in an environment that exposed the dynamic cultures of people of color, people like me. I attended Howard as a biology major focusing on the study of medicine. I matriculated through college and was on the path to becoming a medical doctor, or so I thought. As a freshman, I stumbled upon an informational meeting about the prison industrial complex. The PD Green program was establishing a Howard University chapter so students could tutor adults in jail or prison. One night I was teaching a GED lesson on the gold and bronze eras. During the lesson, one of the men, Jay, began to connect the importance of gold then to the value of money now. Jay's observations on economics paralleled my own. At the end of the lesson, Jay told me he was a middle school dropout and described how no one in his life cared if he went to school. One of Jay's fears was that even if he got his GED, he would still end up behind bars. Jay did receive his GED, but a few years later, he was sentenced to prison. Even when Jay was released, he would face barriers preventing him from using his degree. The reality that education alone does not guarantee achievement frustrated me. After much reflection following my graduation from Howard, I knew I needed time away from my academic life. I thought about what I wanted my life to look like and the people I wanted to help. 
I could not ignore the pool I felt towards understanding the history of America through the lens of those negatively affected by the legal system. My career change from medicine to law came following the realization that I wanted to make the American legal system more equitable for people of color so moments like George Floyd's death would be brought to justice. The skills I built working as an operations coordinator and legal assistant could only better prepare me for a career in law. Next, I needed to identify a law school that would allow me to focus on social change. When selecting institutions of law to apply to, I thought back on the critical points in my adulthood that influenced me, such as the tutoring with the PD Green program. Although I was set to start as a post, and I can't pronounce this word, baccalaureate fellow at the NIH last summer, it was the decision to spend time with my family that led me to be in Minnesota where protests erupted in response to the social just injustices too many have faced since the genesis of this country. I wanted to apply to a law school that focused on imbuing its students with the tools and confidence to fight for social justice and justice for all. With this clarity, I decided to apply to Howard University School of Law. Much like when HUSL first opened its doors in 1869, America is at the crux of racial change. I would like the opportunity to join an alumni legacy rich with the history of people of color fighting for the improvement of our country. Individuals like Julia Copper Mack, the first African-American female judge in the U.S. Court of Appeals, and Thurgood Marshall, the first African-American U.S. Supreme Court Justice, helped develop this legacy. What draws me most to HUSL is your institution's focus on advocacy and defending the rights of African-American and minorities, African-Americans and minorities. With the chance to participate in HUSL's re-entry and civil rights clinics, I can expand my knowledge of the criminal justice system. Attending HUSL would also mean the opportunity to study in an environment rich with the history Howard University has created while gaining the tools to effectively fight for change. I'm pursuing a JD degree to become a civil rights attorney and attempt to make justice available for those whom it has been unduly restricted for too long. I want to help build that better America. It would be an honor to be part of the continuing legacy of improvement and social change Howard University School of Law has been at the forefront of. In the fight for justice, we have nothing to lose but our chains. Wow, powerful, very powerful essay. Um, I see a few things here in the chat. Does anybody want to jump in? Somebody said, love how the essay flows. I agree. Um, Alyssa, I would love to jump on that comment here. And I think it's a very uh, understated comment of the flow. Um, this essay, powerful, powerful story. And it's one where the story really carries it to the end. So um, yes, beginning, impactful, powerful story. And it doesn't lose the flow. And it's part of the writing style. So props to this person who wrote it is the writing style flows very well. Um, and it's, it's almost like um, fashion in that you don't want to lose the silhouette of the person. It's almost like you, you've got that silhouette of the essay and it flows very well. So um, I think that's a very great comment to come out of just reading that first half. Um, there's yeah. more, but I would love to see all these comments that are coming in. Yeah, I think Ayaka, you talking about the silhouette of the essay and making sure that the silhouette still shows the author as best as possible. And there's a few more comments in here um, saying like how often um, we've got a great comment in the chat kind of mentioning like, how do you know if it's staying in your voice? But we have this other comment here from Faiza, I think Ali saying, uh, let's see, like how often do we use I statements? Maybe they also said that they wanna get to know why biology or why that unique major. So something I'm pulling out from all of us talking together is Ayaka speaking about the silhouette and keeping the author at the forefront of this essay. Um, first of all, I think it's a beautiful essay in the, in the way that it is talking about something that's been on 
a lot of Americans minds lately and this is something that has been a huge cultural event something that's unique to the author is that they were physically there in the city and they do do a great job of sticking true to specific examples um, for example while they're teaching uh, the GED program and they bring up this uh, interaction that they had with the student named Jay I think that that's an incredibly powerful example. And I think that it's also a really great way to talk about how one instant and how this tangible thing in their life is pushing them forward and, and why they're writing the essay in the first place. Speaking about um, how to make this essay even better uh, and keeping the silhouette true to themselves. And somebody mentioned, it sounds like it could be a few different essays. I think that uh, this essay is fantastic. And I think that a way it could be better is I think it does lose focus a little bit when it starts to talk about, the author starts to speak about their transition from medical. And this is a really tricky subject and the author could go a lot of different ways for this. And anybody else, please feel free to jump in. Uh, I think that speaking about their background in medical will be on the resume. And I think that they could leverage their resume for all it's worth by maybe um, choosing one or the other focus for this particular personal statement. Um, I think the personal statement is powerful enough without sharing, there's I think maybe one to two paragraphs on the internal dialogue between choosing a school because their brother suggested it and then choosing to go in medical and then this sort of internal dialogue saying that I thought I was going to medical school I thought wrong that to me seems like an internal dialogue that I think the essay could stand without it and I think that um, maybe if they wanted to talk more about their transition from medical then I think that maybe the essay could start with maybe more of that transition um, to me it has like two different things going on here Absolutely. And I think um, going one more step further, um, and, and this kind of echoes back to Faith, your question earlier about do we have to talk about the school we're applying to or the program we're applying to. Um, this person, you can tell this person has done a lot of research and this person, you know, feels the history of the school they're applying to. However, um, you I I don't know about this particular school's personal statement, but most times you're not gonna have three pages to talk about you know, a school and their program. Also, you're, the reader of this essay is an admissions officer. They should know about the school. They should know about the history of the school. They should know what programs are at the school. So really, you don't wanna be regurgitating facts that an admissions officer knows about their own school. Right, you don't need to give them that information. They know about it. What would be more impressive, and Alyssa said this, uh, we were talking about this earlier, um, but you know, if you could talk about more recent people in the field who have come out of that university, who are very active in let's say civil rights, that's a little bit more, oh, this person has done research, but also have gone the extra step and look at who our alumni are or who, who's really active in the field. And that would be a little bit more impressive than saying, oh, you know, they're, they're good Marshall, you know, all these people from history, like, yes, important, important stories and important people in our history. But we're, every part of the essay needs to show something about you. And we, if you're gonna make the claim that you are so committed to the school, then let's take that extra step to, to do the research and, and to make that extra special sparkle and claim into that essay. Yeah, I think that that's a great, that's a great point, Ayaka, and, and definitely speaks to those questions of like to talk about the school, to not talk about this school. I think that this essay is um, made more powerful speaking to the court, like the, the relationship between Howard and the civil rights movement. I think that that's great. And I told, I think it would be great, you know, to talk about um, somebody asked to name dropping professors who've done similar work, something to do. I mean, 
I, that's like, so it's so, uh, everything that we're saying is so personal. Um, I wouldn't say, you know, I think the name dropping just to name drop, just to come across, um, which I think that I would say like um, talking about this paragraph that we're all looking at right now on the screen, I think that it is talking about names that maybe this per the author does have a personal like inspiration and is pulling their power from in order to drive their future. But I would say, um, stick to what really interests you. If you are, there's a lot of webinars that law schools are putting on right now, jump on those webinars. And there's a lot of professors that are actively publishing um, written journals right now. Um, I've been so impressed with, um, there's, there's published journals talking about um, COVID and talking about um, racial civil rights issues and professors are doing the work right now. So if you wanted to, and I'm in no, by no means am I saying that you have to do this because it's a lot of work, but if you are genuinely interested in something and you've been looking at a published journal that a professor at say, for example, Howard um, published, I would suggest that does seem like a little bit more of a uh, a personal like interest in saying um, that you're interested in it. So do you have to drop per name drop professors? No. Are you genuinely interested in, in it? And you're like, hey, I read this professor's published article and this is what I have to say about it. Ayaka actually brought up a great point to me yesterday that you wouldn't want to say like summarize what they talked about, but you'd maybe say like, this is why I get excited about that. Um, that's definitely something that's possible. Let's see, lots of other comments in the chat here. Alyssa, I would love to address uh, Derek's question from quite a bit ago um, about how to pick a topic. And I, I just wanna keep this short. Um, Steve did post my how to pick a topic for your personal statement. Like it's a 30 minute video. I'm so sorry, I talk a lot um, in the Facebook page. So if you dig a little bit um, from a couple of days ago, you should be able to find that. But, you know, we've read two personal statements here. One's very personal about a, a death in the family. This one's a little bit bigger and a little bit more general about Black Lives Matter and, and the whole movement around that and how that affected the person. Um, and in, in that 30 minute talk, I did talk about, you know, general specific and then niche topics. Um, Derek, it sounds like you have a lot of work, you know, work experience and you've had a career. Um, so I would, I would make the bet that you, your topic, whatever you choose would fall into that specific or niche category. Um, and if you want a little bit more definition there, I, I would really encourage you to check that video out. Um, but really, you know, we all have so many experiences that we're pulling from. And I think where you should start is what do you want admissions to know about you, right? Because it's not usually going to be a story about yourself. If you're, if somebody said, hey, Alyssa, what do you want admissions to know about you? I don't think it's going to be, I'm a tap dancer. It's more like I'm compassionate. I'm, you know, I'm outgoing. I, I'm, I love essays, you know, stuff like that more than, you know, um, I had a death in the family and this is how I reacted. So the story needs to anchor those, those qualities you want the admissions to, to know about you and why it would make you a good lawyer um, or a good law student. Um, so I would try to switch that conversation from what story to tell to what qualities you want the admissions to know about you. And that might give you a little bit more direction in the story that you need to tell. Um, I don't think that that is the only thing you need to think about, but I think that's a good starting point. Ayaka, that was just so well said. It's just like such a beautiful point in terms of like thinking about how to center yourself in, in maybe some of these things. And absolutely, you can have something really heavy happen to you. And, and that can be the impetus for this change in your life. And you can talk about that, but also your essay doesn't have to be something heavy. Um, I've actually heard from admissions officers themselves. I think the University of Maryland, they've said this on a podcast before that one of the best essays they ever read was about someone learning how to ride a bike. Um, and it was a beautifully well-written essay. So there are a lot of different things can be up. And I think that this, um, this whole thing will be recorded um, and put up later if anybody wants to go back and like rewatch and maybe um, talk about different things. Let Les gives a great 
great feedback. I totally agree. Um, they, I, we like that they're high, this author here in this essay is, is highlighting the firsts, but you could take up that space to talk about a little bit more of the connection um, between medical and law. I think if this person wanted to, I think there's um, definitely, definitely agree. And um, we have one more essay that we want to get to just watching time. Also, just shout out to everyone talking in the chat and sharing. Um, I can't tell you enough how much talking with others has elevated my experience. And so even if your essay is not up here, I think we're all being elevated here. One more question from um, Mary Lee saying, should family members who attended schools you're applying to and have influenced your application there, but they did not go to the law school specifically be mentioned? Um, totally up to you. If they're part of your story, then mention them. If they're, if you feel like you're mentioning them just to try to, um, you know, kind of like squeeze in that legacy because you feel like you have to, um, one of the best pieces of advice I actually got from Ayaka is trust yourself. If you tell your story, your story could be enough. You know, you have enough going on that um, try telling your story with it, try telling your story without it. So um, it's, it's, I can't really give you a, a yes or no there. If they have a major impact on you, go for it. If you're trying to squeeze it in, maybe you don't need it. Love that piece of advice. All right, let's keep it moving. So last, we have a diversity statement here um, and I will be reading. So I hope you guys aren't tired of my voice yet, but <laughs> it's a short one. Um, Alrighty, diversity statement. 17 hour power, out power outages. Sounds tough. No, it's just another day in Bulalio. After a while, you get used to it. This was normal life for me, as far as I can remember. I was born close to the 2000s when things began to get rough in my hometown. I'm sorry, I'm butchering this name, Zimbabwe. From from doing homework in the candlelight to sh showering the showering the night before, because you knew you would there would be a shortage of water in the morning. It all became a regular routine. My mother was born in India and moved to Zimbabwe after having an arranged marriage to my father. My father comes from many generations of being born in Zimbabwe. My mother did not know one word of English when she moved to live with my father in Zimbabwe and actually did not learn to speak or write until my eldest sister started kindergarten. When I moved to the US, it took me a while to realize that not everyone got to see wild animals every day or that everyone knew how to swim. Seeing a third world country on television, an assumption is made that everyone lives in a hut or has to walk miles for water. That is true for the most part. However, it's more of the rural village town areas. We have cities with skyscrapers and neighborhoods. Our little town had a melting pot of various cultures and races broadening, broadening us to diversity. It was hard for my coworker and peers to first grasp and understand that I consider myself African. I am Indian born in Zimbabwe, making me African with an Asian background, and I am a first generation college graduate. All right, so short and sweet. Any initial reactions here? And I know people are getting comfortable in the chat, so feel free to type it in the chat or take yourself off mute. Definitely a lot going on here. <clears throat> I can absolutely see, uh, you know, why this author, you know, uh, has it as a diversity statement. <clears throat> we have a question in the chat. How long should the diversity statement be? What's the standard? I would say about a page like this one, a page or two pages. It all depends, um, which actually brings up a good question I have for Ayaka for, uh, that I've asked her before. And I love her answer to this. <clears throat> a lot of schools don't have a place for an essay that says, this is where your diversity statement goes. So what do I do then, Ayaka? Um, first, I would check all the writing prompts that the school has out for you. They might have something other than a, what is standard called a diversity statement. They, have, they might have other um, writing prompts out there, like, you know, why this school or something like that. Um, they might also have a longer personal statement um, page allocation. Um, so, you know, see a lot of times you see personal statements that are like, oh, you could definitely break this up into a personal statement and diversity statement. 
And sometimes if you see a school that doesn't have a diversity statement, you're doing the, the reverse. You have to mesh your personal and diversity. Um, so I would make sure that, you know, your story flows and all of that, but really check those prompts that are out there. I, you know, I would be very surprised to see a school that only allows for a personal statement that's two pages and there's no other writing section. Um, and you can definitely infuse other writing portions with a little bit of diversity, you know, take elements out um, from your diversity and put it into other places if, if that school really doesn't have a diversity statement section. Awesome, Ayaka. I, I just love yeah. how you how you put that. I know in the beginning of my writing process, I had written a diversity statement. When I went to the school's application process, like pages, there was no diversity statement. And I just felt like, oh my gosh, what do I do now? So great point. Um, look for a place to put it. Anytime there's an essay available to you, it's a great part. It's a great place to tell more of your story. Um, and I know that I want to get back to this person's diversity statement too. I see a question in the chat. What's the overall purpose of the diversity statement? Um, Ayaka and I have talked about this and just to that question is a diversity statement required? Um, no, it's not required. Um, but anytime there's a place for them to, they say there's an optional essay here, or maybe tell us more about yourself here. There's a, every application is different. I would use every chance you have in a thoughtful and intentional way to paint a bigger portrait of yourself than just that GPA and LSAT. So if you have a story to tell, go for it. Lots of things popping up in the chat here. And I definitely want to get back to this person's statement yeah. so that you can focus on it. But I would say the, I say it like this, Ayaka says it a little bit differently. So um, hopefully we could both shout out, but the way I look at a personal statement is why law school? You have to answer two questions. Does it make sense why you're going to law school? And can you make it through the program, right? As somebody in admissions, they wanna make sure that you're adding to their program. So if you have a story that tells that you have perseverance or discipline or that you're a good team player, you they want to make sure that you'd be a good person to invite into their program, right? That you'd be a good fit, that they could see you doing well with others in the program or maybe um, elevating their program. So to me, that's a personal statement. To me, a diversity statement is how will your past experiences add value to those classroom discussions? How do you have a maybe a different lens of what you're looking at than maybe the typical or maybe like the many people in the classroom or just anyone standing next to you? I was a tap dancer. I could write about being a tap dancer for my diversity statement and what that means to me. Um, the most important part, and Ayaka, I would love if you jumped in on this, is that I'm not just saying that I am a, a Latinx female identifying person and that's what makes me diverse. I'm talking about what that means to me and how that changes the way I think and talk and maybe the, my ideas that I bring to the room. Yeah, and love that. And I would love to like kind of answer that question and also answer the whole, um, what is the purpose of a diversity statement question with context with the essay that we just read. Um, so with the essay that we, that I just read aloud. Um, I think there's really a lot of good stuff here and it's almost too much stuff here. Um, and Alyssa and I reread these essays um, before coming here. So, you know, when I was looking at this essay, I was like, um, you know what, really the key operative message is here in the last sentence, um, I am Indian born it, uh, I am Indian, born in Zimbabwe, making me African with an Asian background, and I'm a first generation college graduate. I understand that to be the point of diversity this person is pulling out, right? Clearly, there's a lot more that's going on beyond just those things, but that's the starting off point. I like to say diversity statement you have to be very clear with the perspective that you're bringing. Like Alyssa said, how are you gonna show up in, in a classroom? So really, yes, this last line in this uh, um, essay gives us the point of diversity. However, I would not understand even 10% of what that meant for this person showing up in a classroom. We wanna go one step further and say what it means to be an 
Indian person born in Zimbabwe, what it means to be African with an Asian background, what it means to be a first graduate or first generation college graduate, right? It means, you know, there's certain things that we can all kind of think of and say, okay, yeah, I kind of get it. But you don't really want the reader to be in that, oh, I think I get it. Or like, maybe they're talking about this. You want to be very, very direct in how you guide that reader. So you don't want to leave it up to the reader to figure that out. You really want to write it out and say, to be Indi an Indian person born in Zimbabwe growing up there meant X, Y, and Z. And define that essay at the top and then kind of tell us about your experience. And I think um, to add on to all of Alyssa, Alyssa's points, which are all great and gold, um, I, I really would consider pivoting somewhere in that diversity statement to talk about how that will inform the future, right? Because a lot of times we get stuck in the whole, like my past, right? How, because your person here and your perspective has built out from your past, it's very easy to be like, oh, my past self is this. But really what's interesting is how that informs our future. So we really wanna pivot that essay forward somewhere in that diversity statement. So that's something that I'm missing a little bit here in this essay is I don't really know I, I think all of these are very impactful things that are coming up in this essay, but I don't really know how that's going to show up in a classroom or in a law career. So we really want to unpack that. Awesome, Ayaka. I thought that was great. It's uh, and, and this is why these workshops are so awesome, because getting more eyes on your essay, I don't want to say is always a good thing, but having a few different people, maybe a few different layers of people that you can say, hey, take a look at this, a great place to start. I know that we don't all have essay editor like roommates or people in our backyard who maybe would be the best fit. I know in my personal life, there's a lot of people they're like, I don't know how to apply to law school. So I don't know what your essay needs to be. Great place to start is does everything in this make sense? Um, are there any questions that you would have for me? A really great essay doesn't leave any questions for the reader. Um, for example, like Ayaka brings up with this one, like what does it mean to be um, a, a African person with an Asian background? What does that mean to you? So you don't want anyone to infer um, anything. You wanna close answers. You wanna try to get away from jargon. And it's, it's a balance. It's a balance of how much do I describe this to the reader and how much do I move forward with the essay? And that's what the fun is in it. So yeah, I think that Ayaka is about to drop uh, our email in the chat. We love people. If you can't tell, we love talking about essays. So please uh, email us in the chat. For those of you that submitted essays for review, uh, we are grabbing your email now, but Ayaka is gonna drop our email in the chat right now. So kind of a two-way system because this is the first time that we've done this publicly. We are grabbing everyone who sent their essays and we will be reaching out to you. I wanna also make clear that Ayaka and I can't, personally give full private services to like everyone, but we will be reaching out to you and we want to hear from everyone. Please email us and we'll stay in touch. We also plan on doing more free workshops in the future. So reach out on Facebook, reach out on Instagram and we're around. Absolutely. And feel free to reach, reach out via the email that I dropped. Um, you know, we're always happy to have a conversation. So feel free to reach out. And on Instagram, just you can reach out on the Else Out Unplugged Instagram or consultants there. And we hope to see all you soon. Have a great Sunday night. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.